Hi, I'm Brad Leshnauer. I'm the Director of Thoracic Aortic Surgery at Emory University School of Medicine, and I'm here today to discuss the early results from the Triumph IDE study, looking at a single branch arch stent graft for zone zero endovascular aortic arch repair. Here are my disclosures. The Nexus Arch Stent Graft System is a modular, off-the-shelf system designed to treat aortic pathology in the aortic arch. It comes in two components. There's a main body arch stent graft that has a single branch integrated into the design that comes in varying lengths of 20 to 40 millimeters and varying branch diameters of 14 to 20 millimeters. The next component is a dock that is 30 millimeters in diameter that is designed to be placed in the distal ascending aorta. And then the main body of the graft is 180 millimeters and comes in varying distal diameters ranging from 32 to 43 millimeters. The second component is an ascending stent graft that comes in varying lengths from 40 to 70 millimeters and varying proximal diameters of 36 to 43 millimeters. This is designed to fit most ascending aortic sizes. Then there is a uh, distal extension stent graft piece that uh, is deployed very similar and designed very similar to other commercially available stent grafts. Uh, it comes in both a straight and tapered design. One of the unique uh, design features that I wanted to highlight of the Nexus is how the two components fixate together and create a seal zone between the two components. So on the distal edge of the ascending stent graft, there are bare, bare metal stents that lock into an internal ring on the dock of the arch stent graft. And when you have this stent graft outside the body and mani manipulate them, you can tell the fi fixation is strong uh, because it's very hard to separate the two pieces. This results in a 25 millimeter seal zone and again reduces any possible endo leaks between the two uh, components. Two components are delivered on pre shaped delivery systems that fit in a 20 French outer diameter transfemoral sheath. Now, given that this is a single branch stent graft system, it requires a first stage uh, cervical debranching. This is a carotid, carotid, carotid subclavian bypass that can be done in various configurations. This slide just demonstrates the carotid, carotid bypass. So the deployment steps of the grafts are as follows. It's introduced through a right brachiofemoral body floss wire, and the device is, with the nose cone is introduced into the brachiocephalic trunk. The graft is then delivered with the brachiocephalic uh, stent first, followed by opening of the dock. At that point, your cerebral perfusion is stabilized and uh, the brain is getting complete blood flow. Then you can take your time and deliver the rest of the main body arch stent graft. The delivery system is exchanged and the ascending piece is introduced and deployed in the ascending aorta graft, again, locking into place into the dock as I previously explained. So now I wanna take a second to describe the actual Triumph study. This is a non-randomized study in the United States and New Zealand, consisting of 30 centers in the US and one in New Zealand with three arms. The primary arm is chronic dissection, and then there are secondary arms of aneurysm and penetrating aortic ulcer or intramural hematoma. I am presenting the 30-day results right now, but there is five-year follow-up in the trial. One of the distinguishing features of this particular clinical trial and how it was designed was that the primary arm was designed to address the much-needed problem of chronic dissection, and this includes both residual type A's and chronic type Bs, which are de novo and have not had uh, prior ascending repairs. There are two co-primary endpoints of the trial. There is a device technical failure endpoint at 30 days, which includes the following components. Failure to accurately deliver track or deploy all the device components, device occlusion, failure to exclude the primary intimal tear, or any additional unanticipated open or endovascular procedure during the initial uh, case. The secondary co-primary endpoint is a 30-day clinical endpoint that consists of early mortality or at least one of the following major adverse events, disabling stroke, permanent paralysis or paraplegia, renal failure, aortic rupture, 
or the development of a new clinically relevant dissection in the thoracic aorta or brachycephalic trunk that requires re-intervention. So now I want to discuss the first 22 patients enrolled in the US trial. There were 13 enrolled in the chronic dissection arm, eight in the aneurysm arm, and one in the PAUIMH arm. The mean age for the entire cohort was 68 years. Pro approximately two thirds were male. 60% uh, were smokers. Most of them had hypertension. A third had significant coronary artery disease. There were five patients uh, in the cohort that had prior stroke. And three quarters of the chronic dissection cohort were residual type A's that had prior sternotomy and aortic intervention. So this highlights the relatively high risk uh, comorbidities and profile of patients being enrolled in this trial. Here are 30 day outcomes. There was a, a single death in the chronic dissection cohort and a single death in the aneurysm cohort. There were no cases of disabling stroke, renal failure, or paraplegia. The mean length of stay for the entire cohort was three and a half days. Excuse me, the mean length of ICU stay was three and a half days, and the mean length of hospital stay was 10 and a half days. So I want to end the presentation with a short uh, clinical case of mine that we enrolled in the trial. This was a 65 year old male, significant COPD, uh, still smoking, high blood pressure, and one of his high risk feature features was that he had had a hemorrhagic stroke in 2022, normal ventricle, and he had a six centimeter distal arch proximal descending thoracic aortic aneurysm secondary to a chronic type B dissection. Here's the preoperative CT scan. You can see the large proximal descending aneurysm. The primary intimal tear is just distal to the left subclavian artery. The aorta tapers down to relatively normal diameters at the celiac. And now I'm going to take you through the uh, fluoro and aortograms of the case briefly. So the device is advanced, as I said, through a brachiofemoral wire. We then uh, shoot an aortogram to make sure we are appropriately positioned. The branch is deployed. Then we do a short burst of rapid ventricular pacing. We really push over to position that doc in the distal ascending aorta. Once that doc's open, the cerebral perfusion is established. We can take our time deploying the remainder of the arch stent graft. We then shoot an aortogram showing the branches being perfused. Next, we're advancing our ascending aortic piece positioning it appropriately within the dock so we can achieve the fixation I previously mentioned. Then under rapid ventricular pacing, the ascending component is deployed. Next, we balloon the branch in the brachycephalic trunk and the overlap in the dock. Another aortogram showing patency. And in this patient, we wanted to stent all the way to the ceiling to exclude any secondary uh, thoracic intimal tears. So we used two distal pieces, which were deployed in a standard fashion, as you can see here, without difficulty. And we complete the case, the nice aortogram showing a brisk visceral perfusion and as expected, some retrograde false lumen perfusion. Here's our post-op CT scan. Patient was discharged 48 hours after the procedure, no neurologic events. You see complete thrombosis of the proximal descending thoracic aorta with, as I mentioned, uh, as expected, some retrograde false lumen perfusion. So we are uh, close to finishing the trial. We have 15 more patients to enroll in the chronic dissection arm, and we thank you for your time.